bear with us. But basically, what I want to do today is I'm Darren Corp. Everybody, hi. Hi. <laughs> Really not earned that yet, so save that for, for later. We'll see what happens. This is, if you guys are guinea pigs, this is an experiment. What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and compose a piece of music and basically treat this kind of like a cooking show where I talk to you about what I'm doing, how I do it, and uh, take some suggestions for like what what I should do. Currently, we're going out uh, mono, or well, we're just going out left. We're not really going out. Left. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it'll sound a little funky maybe, but uh, we'll see what happens. Um, so right now what I'm doing, I'm setting up a new blank session, blank canvas. That's how I like to work usually. So I'm setting up, I use Logic Pro for the uninitiated. This is Logic Pro. Um, it is, I find it to be really easy to use because the time it takes to get from idea to thing that sounds pretty good is like very, very short. I and mean, that's my, my favorite. Uh, thing about logic. So I'm going to put this mic down for a sec. I'm going to try and project as much as I can. Um, so basically, I'm just uh, going to create a new session, one audio track, whatever, doesn't really matter. Save it, you know, because that's important. <laughs> no exclamations. Just regular old session. All right, let me just make sure my audio interface is all set up. So I'm just using a little inbox, like a two-channel thing. I use at home, I use like a thing with more channels, but it's basically the same idea. Um, it's a really basic setup. So for the input, I'm gonna select Fast Track Pro, which is what I got, and now I'm gonna go with the built-in output, so I'm still sending the audio out to the computer. Um, anybody here have experience using digital audio workstations like Logic or anything like that? Awesome. So for you guys, this probably won't be over your heads. For the other guys, I will try to explain as best, as best as I can as I go. Um, so basically, I've got all that set up. That's ready to go. Um, I've got a cable running in. I don't have my guitar hooked up yet, but that's fine. So when I was working on Bastion, I'll use it this. When I was working on Bastion, uh, a lot of what I would do is I would start with just a tempo in mind, basically. And so I'd, I'd set a tempo. Uh, somebody, somebody slow, fast, what, what do you want? What do you guys want? Fast. 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 All right, cool. Let's go fast today. Let's try 180. 180 beats per minute. So 180 beats per minute kind of sounds like this. It's fast. All right, cool. So, so let me. A lot of the way I start when I do this is I just browse. I'll like look at my loop library and, and say, all right, I'm just gonna browse all my drums and see what I got. Kind of around this tempo that's gonna be agreeable because you know. Uh, another factor is when you use loops and you change them from what tempo they were originally at, they can really degrade in quality pretty vastly, especially when you slow them down. So we're at a pretty high tempo, so I think everything will probably sound fine. Um, so we could use whatever, but um, let me trim this. This is probably going to blast us. I'm going to trim this down a little bit. Um, well, let's see here. What does this sound like? <laughs> Sounds kind of badass at this tempo. So. <laughs> you guys are making this really, really easy. I don't know. Um, so, so, no, no. Drum and bass. What do you think? Okay, I'll do. I'll pull. I'll pull a few out here. I'll pull this one. This one sounded kind of badass. Um, I don't want to import the tempo information. You never asked me that. Oh, so much. Um, so let's see. So oh, that's with the click too. So that plus click. All right, that's pretty intense. So let me grab a couple more beats. Yeah, I'll grab that too. I'll put on another track. Maybe I'll use that later or in conjunction. And then I'll grab this. What's this one? Yeah, you know what? That's a mini beat. Let me let me grab a couple of. Uh... That was kind of cool. I'll grab a few more uh, a few more loops, and then I'll grab a couple of mini loops. Because the advantage of the MIDI loops is, you know, you can change the sounds, you can edit them and make them, you know, customize the beat more. So uh, sometimes, you know, if I find some cool audio loops, I'll use those. But I, I always like to, you know, if I want to start with loops, I like to grab some MIDI loops because then I can, you know, futz with them and make them however I like. That is a tiny beat. That's not a, a clever name. Uh, all right. 
right, there's a shift to D and D shift. find some other more messed up stuff uh, because something I like to do when I'm working is you know I don't I don't, I don't just want to make a drum and bass thing I want to make a you know a drum, a drum and bass plus other stuff that doesn't make any sense uh, generally or stuff to fight or subvert the expectation if you start a song it's like oh this is a drum and bass thing you know I'll put some weird uh, you know three over four like fighting stuff um, in there sometimes. So let's see if I can find anything like that. I may have to make it because they don't have a lot of stuff like that. Let me try to find some slow stuff that will sound super crazy when we speak about like that. How about what's this? myself to use this. <laughs> to make it as spare and tiny as I want. And I've also got some MIDI loops here that I can go ahead and change the sounds and make them sound really too small, or I can put effects on any of these to make them super tiny. So I'm gonna show you some of that stuff later. Uh, I guess I'll show it to you right now because I'd probably wanna lay this out a little bit before I start getting into, um, before I start getting into melodic and choral stuff. So let's do that, but I'm gonna need both hands. So I'm gonna project as loud as I can, okay? So, so you guys can hear me. All right, so basically what I'm doing here I don't usually stand like this when I work. I'm <laughs> seated comfortably, but for now I will stand in a provocative position and with my back as arched as I can. Uh, uh, all right, first of all, I'm going to go into my mixer, I'm going to take all my channels, and I'm just going to turn them way down uh, so that if I do want to play them all together, it's not going to be clipping. So I'm just trying to maintain like good gain staging uh, the whole way gain staging for the uninitiated audio people is just uh, basically if you have a loud signal that's distorting somewhere in the chain and you try to turn it down later, it's not really going to work. So you want to keep your levels uh, at a reasonable state the whole process through the chain, if that makes any sense. That's like half a semester of audio school I just tried to summarize. <laughs> so, I hope that makes sense. Um, <laughs> but uh, let's see. Let's just see. So I've got now couple beats layered on top of each other, so let's just, I don't know, let's see what happens. <laughs> when we mute all the tracks 
uh, except for like one of them and see what happens when it comes in. I'll, I'll, I'll use this other little tiny one that we got, so maybe I'll build that at the second time around and see what happens. will be that long, just those, you know, those uh, 16 bars it looks like. So I'm doing that, because we're real fast, so 16 bars is going to happen in like two seconds, so uh, that won't be that long. All right, so let me just, uh, I'll finish laying out the drums here. I'm basically just going to make something that's, I don't know, maybe twice as long as this or, you know, this length, we'll see. Uh, and then once we do that, I'll start laying, I'll look for some, uh, some melodic and chordal loops that I'll put on top of it. Um, when I was doing this stuff for Bastion, a lot of what I looked for was kind of exotic world instruments that would contrast from the uh, sort of trip hop rhythm section I was using. Um, that's a lot of the like the loop kind of stuff I look for because I don't I don't own like Celtic harps and stuff, um, which I guess technically isn't that exotic, but still I, I don't own it, so it's exotic to me. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and then I would lay down a lot of the guitars and basses myself because that's, you know, that's what I play. And then sometimes I'll do some keyboard stuff. I don't have a keyboard with me, so I'm not doing anything today. Uh, so yeah, I got a guitar and bass here. So uh, the idea is what I'm going to do is I'll finish playing this out. And then after that, um, the loops and then maybe the, maybe the bass and stuff. I find it's easier to uh, play to a loop and write based on a loop than to try and find a loop to match something you've written, if that makes sense, uh, on a guitar. Because the loop is, is what it is, and unless it's a MIDI loop, you can't change it, which sometimes I'll grab MIDI loops and change the notes around and stuff, um, and tweak them and change the instrument and all that stuff, and that's fine. Um, I'll do this, because I'm not using my hands. Uh, but most of the time, what I'll do is I'll, I'll you know, find a loop that speaks to me, use it, and then uh, add some live instrumentation over it uh, afterwards. So yeah, what I'm gonna do right now again is finish laying out these beats, these mad beats we got going on. Drum and or bass. <laughs> All right, let's see what this sounds like. show you this real quick. This thing over here is the channel strip, right? And when you pull in any loop, it sets up a whole channel strip of effects for you that already have a cool sound and are going to make the thing sound kind of awesome. Um, it also does this when you take an audio track and you want to play an instrument into it. You can say, I'm playing guitar. I'll show you that. Later. Don't worry about that. But basically, uh, so I'm going to, I want this to sound a little smaller, so I'm going to EQ it uh, and make it sound kind of like a little megaphone effect probably. So I'm going to probably, let's see, I'm going to take off all the lows pretty much, and I'll take off a bunch of the highs, some of the highs, and uh, yeah, let's see, a little that, and I'm going to just move this so it's filtered pretty harshly and see what that sounds like now when I put it in the chain. Uh, yeah, that's smaller. Cool. All right, let's start with that. More of a build than the second thing comes in. Let's see if we can build it like one more time before it gets too nuts and we switch to a different part. So let's take a listen to our loops that we have over here. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. 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 Alright, sweet. Viewed. That was not too crazy. That's gonna be its own thing. It's gonna be a dubstep breakdown. And then, I don't know, I'm 
kind of feel on this one? How, are you, how do you guys feel about this one? Yes? No? Analog drum machine? All right, cool. I'm going to pull this over. Got some 808s working. All right. Let's see how this sounds when we build it. All right, from the top. Little tiny thing. Little phone effect happening. More stuff going on. sort of song structures, so those things will be like A, B, A, B, you know, or some sort of, you know, A, B, A, B, C, back to B or whatever, like a traditional song structure um, with a bridge and verse and chorus. Uh, so that's how, like, how I approach most of the composing I do. Um, and a lot of the instrumental pieces, it's tricky because you want to make a satisfying song structure, and yet you want to have it you want to have it feel like it has a beginning, middle, and an end, and yet you want it to be able to loop seamlessly without anybody noticing that it did that. So, uh, so that's that's a trick, and I don't really have any, I have no explanation for how I cope with that, other than I just like, I end the thing and start it again and see what happens. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, you know what, let's see, it's 12.29, I'm going to move on to the other stuff now, finish with the drums, I'm just going to like double this. So we're going to have that form. Uh, I'll save these beats so that maybe I can make the second time through like extra crazy, but I'm just going to double the thing that we already have right now, and then I'm going to move on to loops. Uh, other loops, that is, melodic and chordal. So I'm just going to copy this over, the whole form. This is a trick that I use uh, composing stuff, like I use this in Bastion a bunch, like a lot of the pieces are just like the same form twice. Um, and I'll change some stuff the second time to make it build more or something, but honestly a lot of it's very, it's just very much the same thing, again, to like, you know, flesh out the form a little bit. Um, uh, and I'll add, you know, flourishes and everything to differentiate it a little bit and change the mix and stuff like that.
build it again. I'm just going to keep building it. That's it. It's just going to keep going forever and ever. All right, it's going to get real intense up until it drops out again. The fancy little part right before the crazy part at the end.
let me make a new track, a duplicate track. I'm going to copy that uh, sound over to this section here where I want it. Maybe let's try it right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to EQ it so it's not as full, uh, so it can cut through a little bit better. Uh, huh? Disco strings? Disco, that's what it's called. It's called disco strings. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't name it. Uh, just, I just use it. Uh, uh, yeah, let me, uh, I'm going to put a bunch of distortion on that also. <laughs> so I'm going to replace the overdrive. Overdrive is child's play. Bit crush. We will crush the bits. All of them. Uh, yeah. Alright, so let's see here. Let me, this is a thing I like to... Alright. sense because when you mess something up in a way that sounds like an aesthetic choice you're like okay cool I get it I accept that's just the thing that's been messed with instead of well that sounds like a loop that's been time stretched and is awful you know so um, so that's that's uh, you know little secret no longer a secret though but I just told you guys <laughs> but that is that is one trick I use a whole bunch especially when you're you know doing this by yourself and you don't know uh, you know an awesome Violin player, violinist. To Let's get rid of some of the dry. Let's get rid of all the dry. I don't even care. Something a little more low end -y. so not a bass, not in the bass range, something a little lower, maybe, I don't know, we guess we got one. Organ. 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 All right, organ. Cool. Let's do an organ. This one, like a lot of the organ parts that they have in here are like really just like southern rock organ and stuff like that. <laughs> and so you all like maybe have to go in and tweak the, the MIDI uh, to make it not sound terrible. <laughs> I don't know. That doesn't sound terrible to me. I'm cool with that. Let's see what happens when I bring that in, like, here. And see how that sounds. Okay, I gotta change the MIDI notes. Alright. Let's see here. Okay, all right, cool. So let me, I don't know where this is 
experiment. I'm going to see what happens. I don't even know what's happening. So I'm just going to move this somewhere. Try D sharp, for example. I don't know if that'll work. It, it rubs a little bit, but uh, I'm okay with that. There's also another, we can try the notes that it lands on. It lands on a, oh no, okay, cool. Let's try that A sharp there uh, that it lands on and see what happens when we do that. <laughs> All right, let's see what that sounds like. Stick with this. Why not? Uh, well, so it goes to, I can change the note it goes to, I can just make it go right back to the. Yeah, let's do that. Let's keep it there. And then after this, I'd say, let's move on to some guitar and bass now. We got eight minutes. Perfect. No problem. There's off the beat there. Oh, thank you. I definitely would have discovered that eventually. <laughs> thank you for that. All right, cool. Let's grab this guitar here. This is a guitar my friend found in the garbage. So, see, should be fine. <laughs> Recorded this thing before. It's not too bad. All right. He's also super tall, though, so instead of so shorting this strap for five minutes, I'm gonna have to sit down. So let's grab the cable here. So yeah, I'm just going direct in. I'm not even. I'm not going through a preamp. I'm not going through anything other than just the, the built-in preamp on the uh, the M box here. Um, and that's how I record. I go straight in usually to my um, well, all through Bastion. I went straight in to my uh, audio interface. Now I have like a little preamp that I use, but I mean honestly it doesn't make a huge difference when you're gonna put a bunch of fun effects on something. Hey! You got it. So let me so here's what I was talking about earlier when you can set up a new track and just kind of tell it what you want it to be and it'll get really close to what you had in mind almost or something. So electric guitar. Oh look, what do you know? I'm playing electric guitar. I'll go there. Oh look, there's a tone sampler of like all these awesome sounding things. What do I want it? Okay. Just pick by, by name. Which one of those sounds appealing to you guys? Garage Rock. The first one I heard was Garage Rock. Is this somebody say Garage Rock? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes. Works for me. Let me just tune up a little bit here. Let's 
see what is going to work over this.
ending. Here we go. And uh, I'm actually playing tonight at Boston Plays Indies with the band Control Group. Uh, if you guys want to come check that out. And then I'm also going to do some Bastion stuff with the BGO at the end of the night. So, yeah. 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 Yeah.